Welcome back to Designing a Mimic LNA. We're now at part four, and uh, where we left off in part three was just getting a basic understanding of noise figure in a, at a system level in terms of cascaded noise figure and the relationship between noise figure and gain. In this segment, what we're going to do is actually look at the FET, in this case the enhancement mode or EFET in the triquin process, and begin to understand this device as the foundational device of our low noise amplifier. Um, so to begin with, what we normally want to do is take a look at the IV characteristics to see where we're going to get linear amplifier performance. And that's just a simple matter of taking the basic EFET uh, out of the triquin PED design kit and hooking up an IV curve element here and then looking at some IV curves. So um, looking at these IV curves, we can see here that because this is an enhancement mode device, we're going to get turn on above zero volts. And uh, the nature of this device inside of a gallium arsenide process uh, with a uh, metal gate uh, implies that we're really not going to want to operate this um, much above 0.7 volts because that's where the gate is going to forward bias and act more like a diode. Um, so we're sort of constrained between the turn on voltage, which is on the order of about um, 0.2 to 0.3 volts and uh, on the gate and the upper end at 0.7 volts, but we're also somewhat constrained on our VDS, uh, our drain voltage, by where the knee is. And um, in any class A or class AB amplifier design, we're going to want to be in this region here. Um, so just looking at this IV characteristic, we can say that we should start exploring our circuit, let's say at 0.45 volts. That's going to be about halfway in this range here. And let's say we want to uh, go two and a half volts on the um, on the drain. So when we do that, I'm going to set up a very simple circuit to uh, start to begin to understand this device in terms of its gain and noise figure and the trade-offs that we're going to have to make. And as we mentioned in the first video in this installment, our, our methodology here is uh, very much like an onion. We want to peel back the layers of complexity. And as we do that, we want to gain a deeper and deeper understanding of our design, uh, taking that understanding with us as we go from um, not knowing a whole lot about the process or our circuit uh, to getting a complete circuit and building up our understanding of the sensitivities and interactions and really what's going on inside. And the best place to start is just a very simple circuit like this where we have no reactive elements, we have no microstrip or RF elements. We're really just looking at the device in 50 ohms and uh, playing around with the bias so it, that we can uh, select an appropriate bias condition that's going to put us in the neighborhood of the performance that we want. This doesn't mean that we're not going to adjust the bias as we go through the process, but we're just going to gain an understanding of what would be a good or reasonable starting place. Um, so with that, let's go ahead and look at our, our noise circles and gain circles here. And um, you can see that, um, let me minimize this a little bit so we can get a, you really can see it, um, that I've got my noise figure over here with my minimum noise figure uh, in the middle at uh, 1.12 dB noise figure, and I've got my gain circles over here with my um, uh, uh, maximum gain that I would uh, be able to get out of this device um, in this region over here. And let's look what happens as we start tuning over bias to select a bias condition that's going to be appropriate for this. So what we're looking for is a minimum noise figure and a reasonable amount of gain in terms of a single stage device. So let's start by adjusting the voltage on the uh, the gate here. And as we do that, you can see that as I'm raising up the voltage, if you start looking at the noise figure over here, you can see that raising the gate voltage begins to drop down our noise figure until it starts to go up again. And it looks like we see a minimum right around here at about half a volt. And on our drain, if we then start varying our drain bias, you can see that as we begin to drop the drain bias, we're getting lower and lower noise figure. Of course, we have to be careful about this because what we're trading off now is a dynamic range. We're not going to be able to swing as much voltage across that device, so we need to be careful in terms of um, that nonlinear spec with regard to these linear specs. But you can see that as we drop down our um, drain voltage, we're going to get somewhat improved noise figure, which sort of makes sense. The device is operating cooler, not as hot, and um, we should expect to see the noise figure improve. So if we play around a little bit with this, and I think it looks like we're going to find some good performance right around half a volt. So for sake of simplicity, let's just dial it in at half a volt. And um, let's get a reasonable amount of um, voltage across that device. Let's say um, two and a half volts. 
and we get about a dB of noise figure and 15 dB of gain, which is quite substantial. Uh, it's a reasonable amount given our um, analysis in the previous uh, video where we looked at the uh, relationship between gain and noise figure. Um, so this would be a good starting place for our design. Um, we can take these bias points and use this uh, in a more developed design where we can actually start implementing uh, matching networks and bias networks to um, change this from an ideal situation where we're looking at our bare 50 ohm um, situation of a single device and maybe putting it into a larger context and now begin to look at stability and look at uh, the power out and where we're going to get compression um, and develop our understanding of this device to the next level. Well, that's where we're going to leave this one off and uh, we'll take up some of those issues in our next video. If you'd like more information about uh, the noise um, simulations that I've done here, the stability, um, the uh, gain circle, the noise circle, um, how to use the swept uh, DC measurement capability, I encourage you to uh, go to the AWR website and look at some other AWR TV videos. Uh, and if you still have some questions, uh, feel free to uh, download a demo copy and play around with this yourself or contact your AWR sales professional.